Hi students, today we will study in detail about simple harmonic motion or SHM. The previous class we studied about simple harmonic motion and what is the criteria for a periodic motion to be a simple harmonic motion. All periodic motions, all vibrations or oscillations are not SHM. The condition for an oscillation or vibration to be a simple harmonic motion is that the force acting, the restoring force acting on the body or the acceleration of the oscillator should be directly proportional to displacement from the mean position. And also it, it should be always directed towards the mean position. Here this Q is the mean position. When the pendulum is oscillating between the two extreme points P and R, Q is the mean position. At any instant of oscillation, the force, restoring force that you remember mg sin theta, that will be always acting towards the mean position and the magnitude of force is always directly proportional to displacement from the mean position. So, if the restoring force acting on an oscillator or vibrator, if it is directly proportional to the displacement from the mean position and always it is directed towards the mean position, only such oscillations or vibrations are called simple harmonic motion. And in this class, I am going to explain here in detail about the displacement of SHM and the derivation of equation for velocity of SHM, acceleration, kinetic energy and potential energy. First of all, we have seen from the previous class itself, the displacement of an SHM can be written as y is equal to a sin omega t. And also you know in detail about this equation. This y represents the displacement of the oscillator at any instant of time. It can be at the mean position or in between the mean position and extreme position. So at any instant of time t, the y will be keep on changing. Here a is the maximum amplitude, maximum displacement towards one side that is called amplitude of the oscillator. Here this much is the amplitude, that is the maximum displacement on either side of the mean position. And omega is the angular frequency and t is the time variable. So this equation gives us the position or displacement of the bob at any instant of time. For a given oscillator, omega will be constant, amplitude will be constant, only time is the variable. So, if, if you apply the value of the constants, the amplitude and angular frequency, then at any instant of time, we can locate the position of the bob here, whether it is at the mean position or the extreme position here or the opposite side extreme position, that can be obtained by applying the value of time. So, at any instant of time, we can obtain the y, that is the position of the bob on either side from the equation y equal to a sin omega t. So this equation represents the displacement equation of the simple harmonic oscillator. Now the second equation, we have to derive an equation for velocity. We know that the equation for instantaneous velocity v is equal to dy by dt, dy by dt where dy is a infinitesimally small, a very small displacement in y direction in a small interval of time dt. So the displacement by time that will give the acceleration of the body. So in this equation, v is equal to d by dt of, for y we can substitute the value a sin omega t, a sin omega t. In this equation, a is a constant, omega is also a constant. So when we differentiate this equation, it will come a into 
when we are differentiating sin omega, A is a constant that can be taken outside the differential. So, A into, when we differentiate sin omega t, in that omega is a constant again, that also should be taken outside omega. Then, differential of sin omega t is cos omega t. So, we will get the equation of velocity of an oscillator as A, A omega into cos omega t. Now, we can slightly modify this equation. We know that cos square theta, cos square theta is equal to 1 minus sin square theta. So, cos theta will be equal to square root of 1 minus sin square theta. Here we have, instead of theta we have taken omega t. So, we can write cos omega t cos omega t is equal to under root 1 minus sin square omega t. So, if you substitute that value here, we can get the equation of velocity v is equal to a omega into square root of cos omega t can be written as 1 minus sin square omega t. Okay? So, the equation becomes a omega into under root 1 minus sin square omega t. Now, what I am doing, I am multiplying this a inside the square root. So, when we take this a into the square root, it should become a square. Then only outside the square root become a. So, the equation v equal to velocity of the oscillator is equal to omega into, I am taking a inside the square root. So, it becomes square inside. So, 1 into a square become a square minus a again here with the sin omega t a square sin square omega t. Now in this equation we can see here a square sin square omega t but y equal to a sin omega t ok a square sin square omega t y equal to a sin omega t. So a square sin square omega t a square sin square omega t will be equal to y square means you can write the equation of velocity v is equal to omega into square root of a square minus y square. So, this is the equation for velocity of an oscillator. The velocity of an oscillator as such some simple harmonic oscillator is v is equal to omega into root of a square minus y square. Now, you can see the special cases. Suppose initially the oscillator is at this position, mean position. At that mean position, the value of y is equal to 0. If y equal to 0 in this equation, then v becomes v is equal to omega into square root of a square minus 0. Because at this mean position, there is no displacement, y is 0. So, when we apply y equal to 0, this equation becomes omega into root of a square is a. This is the maximum value of velocity v max. So, when a oscillator, when a simple pendulum oscillates in between two extreme position, its velocity will be maximum at the mean position. While it is oscillating, maximum velocity will be at the mean position that will be equal to omega into a. Now, at the extreme position, when the bob reaches here, its displacement y is equal to a, y is equal to a. So, when we apply that in this equation, its velocity v is equal to omega into square root of a square minus a square. So, a square minus a square equal to 0 means v is equal to 0. It means at the extreme position, the bow will become 0, the velocity of the bow becomes 0, it will stop, again it will return back. So, at the mean position, velocity is maximum. At the extreme position, when it is moving towards the extreme position, the velocity is keep on decreasing. When it reaches at the extreme position, it stops and again it returns back towards the mean position. And when it reaches at the mean position, this kinetic energy becomes maximum and because of that high kinetic energy, it will start moving in the opposite direction. When it moves opposite direction, 
the restoring force is acting the reverse way so the velocity will keep on decreasing and finally again it will stop here so in between the two extreme portion it will start oscillating if there is no dissipation of energy if there is no loss of energy due to the external friction like friction of air air drag etc if it is not having any external force it will be keep on oscillating with the undamped oscillation it is called undamped oscillation with a constant amplitude now this much you have to remember about the velocity of an oscillator here once again the expression for velocity and that is v is equal to omega into root of a square minus y square and from that equation we can find out the maximum velocity at the mean position and the minimum velocity is zero at the extreme position and in between that two position we can have any value of velocity by applying the value of y in this equation okay now we can see the second third one that is the acceleration of the oscillator Now we can see the third quantity that is acceleration of the oscillator. So once again we will start with the displacement equation. The displacement of the oscillator is y is equal to a sin omega t. And after differentiation we got the equation of velocity. The velocity equation we got it was a omega into cos omega t. This equation we modified in the form of omega into root of a square minus y square. Now this is the actual equation of velocity a omega into cos omega t. Now we know that acceleration is equal to rate of change of velocity that is dv by dt. When we differentiate velocity with respect to time we will get acceleration. So the acceleration of the oscillator a is equal to d by dt of Instead of v, I can substitute the value of velocity that is a omega into cos omega t. In this equation, a omega is constant inside cos function also this omega is constant, only time is the variable. So when we differentiate this equation, acceleration a is equal to this a omega, first of all we have to write, they are constants. Then, when we are differentiating cos omega t, again one omega is the that also should be taken outside. And cos omega t differential is minus sin omega t. So, the equation of acceleration becomes a is equal to minus a omega into omega, omega square into sin omega t. Here we can see minus a omega square into sin omega t. But we can see here a sin omega t is y. Here also we have a sin omega t. So this equation can be written as acceleration is equal to minus omega square into a sin omega t. This a sin omega t is nothing but the displacement of the oscillator. So the final equation of acceleration can be written as a is equal to minus omega square into y. This is the equation of acceleration of a simple harmonic oscillator that is a is equal to minus omega square into y. In this equation when we apply the conditions we can get the value of minimum acceleration and maximum acceleration. Suppose first case we are applying this condition this equation at the mean position. When the particle reaches at the mean position the acceleration a equal to minus omega square y acceleration a is equal to minus omega square into y at the mean position displacement is equal to 0 y equal to 0 no displacement at the mean position when we apply in this equation y equal to 0 we will get acceleration equal to 0 means at the mean position acceleration is equal to 0 the reason is that we know that the restoring force acting on the pendulum 
on the bob at this point is zero. When it is displaced this way, then only restoring, restoring force will start in the opposite direction. So, at the mean position, it is an undisturbed position. There is no restoring force acting. And if there is no force acting, there is no acceleration. According to Newton's second law, for acceleration, there should be a force, F equal to ma. If there is no force acting, no restoring force, so acceleration will be zero. Means at the mean position, during the oscillation, during the oscillation, at the mean position, always acceleration will be zero. And also we have seen from the equation of velocity v equal to omega into root of a square minus y square. At the mean position y equal to zero, then v equal to omega into a, root of a square is a, so v equal to omega into a, means at the mean position, velocity is maximum. Velocity is maximum, but acceleration is zero. So this a special case at the equilibrium point, Velocity is maximum, but acceleration is zero. The reason is that at the equilibrium point, there is no force acting on the oscillator, so acceleration cannot be there. For any way, for getting acceleration, there should be a force. Nothing, no force is there on the bob at the equilibrium point, at the mean position, so acceleration is zero. But velocity is maximum at the mean position or equilibrium point. And if we apply the second case at the extreme position, suppose the bob reached here. That at extreme position, the displacement y is equal to amplitude a. Then we can see here, acceleration a is equal to minus omega square into y is equal to a. This is the maximum acceleration, a max. Maximum acceleration is equal to minus omega square into a. And we can see here, at the extreme position, when we apply velocity equation, v equal to omega into root of a square minus at this extreme point, y equal to a, a square minus a square, 0, velocity is 0. Means at the extreme point, the velocity of the oscillator is 0, but acceleration is maximum. And also, if we can see in this equation, this acceleration is, omega is a constant. For an oscillator, omega is constant. So, acceleration is directly proportional to y, displacement. Means when this displacement increases, acceleration is increasing at the extreme position it becomes maximum that is minus omega square into a when it returns back acceleration decreases and at this point acceleration becomes zero so at the extreme point velocity is zero acceleration is maximum at the extreme point velocity is zero acceleration is maximum at the mean position acceleration is zero velocity is maximum so this one special case at the extreme point if you, have getting, if you are getting a question that give an example for a body which is having zero velocity but non-zero acceleration. One example is this one. When a body is oscillating, when a pendulum is oscillating, at the extreme point for the bob of the pendulum, velocity is zero but acceleration is maximum. Just like when we are throwing a body upward, at the maximum height, velocity becomes zero but acceleration is the 9.8 downward direction. Now we can see the fourth quantity that is the kinetic energy of a oscillator, simple harmonic oscillator. We have the equation, we know that kinetic energy of a body is given by Ke is equal to half mv square, where m is the mass of the bob in the case of a pendulum and v is its velocity. So kinetic energy is equal to half mv square and for a simple harmonic oscillator, the velocity at any instant of time is given by v is equal to v is equal to omega into root of a square minus y square a square minus y square at any instant of time if you apply the value of y displacement zero or maximum or any other value we will get the velocity at that particular instant of time so here, we have to derive an equation for kinetic energy of the oscillator. So for kinetic energy of the oscillator, Ke is equal to, Ke is equal to half into mass of the oscillator, m, into square of the velocity. Velocity is omega into root of square root of a square minus y square. So we can write omega into square root of a square minus y square. 
square of that whole square because it is v square so v is omega into root of a square minus y square so v square will be and the omega into root of a square minus y square whole square when we square this equation the equation become kinetic energy is equal to half m into omega square omega square into root of a square minus y square whole square will be a square minus y square that is square of omega is omega square and square of root a square minus y square is become a square minus y square so the equation for kinetic energy is half m omega square into a square minus y square this equation gives the kinetic energy of the oscillator at any instant of time during the oscillation and here also when we apply the condition suppose the first case suppose we are taking the mean position at this point q at the equilibrium point at the mean position y equal to 0 when we apply here y equal to 0 we will get the kinetic energy equation ke is equal to half m into omega square into a square minus 0 or we can write this kinetic energy this is the maximum kinetic energy ke max kinetic energy maximum that is equal to half m into omega square into a square this gives the maximum value of kinetic energy that is kinetic energy maximum the maximum value of kinetic energy ke max ke max is equal to half m half m into omega square into a square this is the maximum value of kinetic energy okay maximum value of kinetic energy ke max is equal to half m omega square a square now if we apply the same condition at the extreme point if we are applying the same condition at the extreme point that is at the extreme point that is the second case at the extreme point ke is equal to k is equal to half m omega square into a square minus at the extreme position position at the extreme point y equal to a the displacement y become a that is a square minus a square so a square minus a square equal to 0 means kinetic energy is equal to 0 means when a bob is oscillating when a pendulum is oscillating its kinetic energy is maximum at the equilibrium point mean position that is equal to half m omega square a square and at the extreme point kinetic energy becomes zero because at the extreme point y equal to a displacement equal to amplitude when displacement y become amplitude maximum displacement a square minus a square equal to zero so kinetic energy is zero means when the bob is oscillating when it at the equilibrium point when it is at the equilibrium point kinetic energy is maximum when it is moving towards the extreme point kinetic energy gradually decrease and become zero so eventually potential energy will be increasing and becoming maximum at the extreme point that we can see in the next expression now we have to derive an equation for the fifth quantity that is potential energy so for that purpose suppose First of all, I am displacing the bob through a small distance, a small displacement, y from the mean position. When it is displaced through a distance y, a restoring force will act in the opposite direction. And that restoring force f is proportional to y, or that f is equal to minus ky. Here the negative sign shows that the restoring force is acting towards the equilibrium position, means opposite to the displacement and it is directly proportional to y means the displacement increases restoring force also will increase so right now at this position minus ky is the restoring force acting where k is called the force constant force constant of the oscillator now imagine from this point i am displacing the bob further a small distance a very infinitesimally small distance say dy 
For that purpose, since minus ky is the force acting towards the mean position, to displace in the opposite direction, I should apply a plus ky force in the opposite direction. So, I am doing a small amount of work, small amount of work to displace the bob from this point to this point through a small displacement dy by applying a force plus ky in that direction. So, the small amount of work done, dw, is equal to the applied force plus ky into displacement dy. Force into displacement. Work done is equal to force into displacement. So, ky is the small amount of force applied and dy is the displacement. ky into dy, that is the small amount of work done in displacing the bob through a small, infinitesimally small displacement dy. Now, imagine that we are displacing from the mean position to a larger displacement then the total work done W can be obtained by integrating this expression that is W integral of dW means the total work done W is equal to integral of dW is ky dy ky dy when we integrate this equation the total work done W is, is equal to k is a constant and integral of y dy integral of y dy is y square by 2 so the total work done w is equal to k into y square by 2 k into y square by 2 here we can apply the limit for y it can be from 0 to maximum according to the situation so right now we are taking the equation of work done as k y square by 2 for or we can say it is half k y square this work done will be stored in the bob as is potential energy. So, potential energy of the oscillator P e is equal to the work done in displacing against the restoring force that is half k y square. So, half k y square is the equation for force acting half k y square half k y square is the equation for the potential energy of the simple harmonic oscillator. At any instant of time, the value can change. We can modify this equation by a small way. Uh, we know that equation for force according to Newton's equation F is equal to ma, mass into acceleration. And in the case of an oscillator, the force acting F can be written as F is equal to mass into acceleration equation already we derived that is minus omega square into y so m into instead of acceleration and substituting this value minus omega square into y and also we have this equation the restoring force acting the acceleration is given by the restoring force that acceleration is given by the restoring force f is equal to this equation minus ky minus ky. So, we have two equations for the force acting on the simple harmonic oscillator. One is from Newton's second law that is minus m omega square y. Another from the Hooke's law that is f is equal to minus ky. On equating these two equations that is minus ky is equal to minus m omega square into y this y y will get cancelled, we will get the value minus also cancelled, we will get the value of k is equal to m omega square. We can substitute that value here in the equation of potential energy, k is equal to m omega square. So, the potential energy equation p is equal to half into k is given the value m omega square. So, m omega square into y. So, equation for potential energy is half m omega square into y half k y square this k can be replaced by half k is m omega square into y square half m omega square into y square half m omega square into y square is the equation for potential energy of a simple harmonic oscillator now we apply these special cases. When we apply the special cases,
Suppose we are taking the points like the main point, main position, the equilibrium point. At the equilibrium point, the displacement y is equal to zero. So in this equation, if I put y equal to zero, then potential energy P e is equal to zero. Potential energy become zero. Means at the mean position, potential energy of the oscillator is zero. And what we have seen previous from the previous equation of kinetic energy, at the mean position y equal to zero and kinetic energy is half m omega square a square, that is maximum value. So at the mean position, potential energy is zero and kinetic energy is maximum. If you take the second case, second case, that is at the extreme point, at the extreme point, y equal to a, y equal to a. So from this equation, potential energy, half m omega square into y square, y square, we can, y we can substitute a. So the equation becomes potential energy at the extreme point, p is equal to half m omega square, omega square into y square. Instead of y, we are putting maximum value of y is at the extreme point is a square. So half m omega square a square. This is the maximum potential energy at the extreme point. So at the mean position, potential energy is zero. At the extreme position, potential energy is maximum, PE maximum, that is coming at the extreme point. Now we can compare these two equations. We have got before, kinetic energy is maximum at the equilibrium point. That maximum kinetic energy we got half m omega square a square. Now here we can get, we are, we are getting at the extreme point. At the extreme point, maximum potential energy is also equal to half m omega square a square. See the two equations. At the mean position, kinetic energy maximum is half m omega square a square. At the extreme position, maximum potential energy is half m omega square a square. So, we can see here, energy is neither created nor destroyed. At the mean position, it is completely kinetic energy, that is half m omega square a square. At the extreme position, it is completely potential energy, that also half m omega square a square. In between extreme position and mean, in between extreme position and mean position, there will be both kinetic plus potential, and that total energy we can obtain by adding the equation of uh, potential energy and kinetic energy. So what we are seeing here, at the mean position, kinetic energy is maximum. That we got kinetic energy maximum is half m omega square a square, and at the extreme position, potential energy is maximum that potential energy maximum is also equal to half m omega square a square. Now in between these two extreme position and mean position, we can take any one point here, at that time there will be both kinetic energy and potential energy. So the total energy, the total energy of the oscillator at any point in between extreme point and mean position, the total energy is equal to sum of the kinetic energy plus potential energy. That is, total energy is equal to, we have the equation for kinetic energy, that is half m omega square into a square minus y square. Total energy is equal to kinetic energy is half m omega square. At any position, the kinetic energy is half m omega square into a square minus y square plus at any position, at any point in between extreme position and mean position, the potential energy is half m omega square y square. That is plus half m omega square y square. So we can see here, when we expand this equation, that is total energy is equal to half m omega square into a square, opening the bracket, minus, minus, half m omega square into y square, half m omega square into y square plus potential energy, half m omega square y square, half m omega square into y square. This minus half omega, minus half m omega square y square and plus half m omega square y square get cancelled. What is remaining here? Total energy is equal to total energy is equal to half m omega square into a square. See here. At the extreme, at the extreme point, the maximum potential energy is half m omega square a square. 
at the mean position maximum kinetic energy is half m omega square i square in between extreme point and mean position anywhere in between there is both potential energy as well as kinetic energy when we add both of them kinetic energy plus potential energy the total energy also become half m omega square s square half m omega square s square it means energy is neither being created nor be destroyed it is only changing from one uh, form of energy into another form at the equilibrium point mean position it is only kinetic energy when it moves towards the extreme point kinetic energy decreases but potential energy increases and the extreme point potential energy become maximum kinetic energy becomes zero so in between that there is both potential and kinetic but we can see the total energy at the mean position is half m omega square a square total energy at the equi at the extreme position is also half m omega square a square in between these two points also total energy is same means energy remains constant throughout but we can see extreme position potential energy is maximum and kinetic energy is zero at the mean position potential energy is zero and kinetic energy is maximum now we can see the variation of kinetic energy and potential energy on a graph in this graph i am taking the displacement of the oscillator this displacement on the y axis now we can see the variation of this kinetic energy and potential energy on a graph in this graph on the x axis i am taking the displacement of the bob in this direction so the displacement y is taken along x axis and the energy of the oscillator i am taking on y axis energy is taken on y axis and displacement along x axis this energy taken on y axis it can be kinetic energy potential energy or the total energy now when we consider the kinetic energy equation of kinetic energy at the mean position we have seen mean position y equal to 0 then kinetic energy become maximum so kinetic energy this black curve represents the variation of kinetic energy at the extreme position when at the extreme position y equal to a when y equal to a a square minus a square is 0 means at the extreme position kinetic energy is 0 means at this two extreme point kinetic energy is 0 so this black curve represents the variation of kinetic energy at the extreme position kinetic energy is 0 when the bob moves towards the equilibrium point this is the equilibrium point the mean position the kinetic energy keep on increasing and at the equilibrium point means at this point kinetic energy become maximum this much maximum and that value is half m omega square a square so this black curve represents the variation of kinetic energy at the extreme point it is zero at the mean position it is maximum and this red curve represents the variation of potential energy in potential energy equation from half m, half m omega square y square at the mean position y equal to zero so half m omega square y square 0 so at the mean position potential energy is 0 but the extreme position potential energy become maximum when the bob reaches here it stops so kinetic energy becomes 0 but potential energy is maximum height is maximum potential is maximum so this curve represents at the extreme point maximum potential energy at the mean position zero potential energy and also we can see this horizontal line that black line it represents the total energy if you add potential energy and kinetic energy at any instant of time that will give the total energy at this mean position there is only kinetic energy so the kinetic energy curve is touching the total energy at the extreme point there is only potential energy only no kinetic energy so the potential energy curve is touching the total energy so at other points we have kinetic plus potential when we add these two that will be equal to the total energy it means the total energy remains constant throughout it is a horizontal line parallel to x axis so there is no change in total energy but kinetic energy and potential energy will keep on change and total energy will remain constant so this is the total explanation of uh, simple harmonic oscillation